Good evening, everyone. If you see somebody talking next to you, tell them to hold on for one second. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. First and foremost, before I begin, I want to say thank you all for being here this evening. There are a lot of great things happening in the city of Peekskill, and it's an honor and a privilege to be able to share some of these things with you all this evening. So uh, before we begin, my grandmother raised me right. She told me to God be the glory, put God first. So at this time, I'm going to ask Reverend Gary Coulter, please come up for the invocation. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we come to you, God, first. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, you're so awesome, Lord, and you keep showing us morning by morning how awesome you really are. And Father, we just want to thank you first for all that you do and all that you keep doing for us, oh God. Every time we turn around, God, you keep blessing us. And we just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for our mayor to come before us, oh God, to show us and to tell us all of the things that you've endowed in him, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you continue to give him wisdom and knowledge so that he may lead the people of peace skill, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, for the council that surrounds him. We pray, oh God, that they would bind together in the spirit of love for the accomplishments of good things for this city, oh God. And we pray, oh God, for the people in this great city. Father, that you would just keep us together and let us know, oh God, that we can do nothing without you. Father, I pray, oh God, as we continue, God, throughout this night, be with us. Bring love and peace and joy and happiness in this room. Let us be on one accord. Father, I pray that this day be the day that we understand that it's so important for us to come together and show the love of Christ to one another. Father, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do today. For we believe that you are in this place and we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. At this time, we're going to have uh, the national anthem by Ms. Rodriguez. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red flare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Wonderful. Let's give her another hand. Thank you. Hi, 
everybody. Good evening. I'm Pete Harkum, and I am the state senator for the 40th district, and I'm pleased to be with you tonight to introduce the mayor of the great city of Peekskill, Andre Rainey. Yes. <laughs> mayor Rainey has quickly become a standout in the world of government and public service. He brings new energy and a new inclusive approach to leadership in Peekskill. He's a great ambassador for this city, and he's become one of the shining lights in Westchester County, representing new forward-thinking voices in Westchester government. And he has a bold vision for Peekskill's future. Mayor Rainey's a lifelong resident of Peekskill, an entrepreneur, and a proud father of two. He understands the needs of the people of this city and has a great appreciation of what it takes to truly make a city thrive and to continue on the path of progress. Mayor Rainey has done and continues to do a fantastic job of building relationships and ensuring our young people receive the essential tools they need to be successful. In fact, we were just down at a work session with the Boys and Girls Club, so he's always working. <laughs> Focusing on our youth is preparing for our future and we thank the mayor for your passion and your leadership on this issue. The improvements we see in peak, peak skill are profound, and this mayor has been successful in bringing more business, more economic development, and more unity to this city in a very short time. And I look forward to my continued partnership with Mayor Rainey and this very talented, committed, hardworking and divorce, diverse common council. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Freudian slip. <laughs> and with that, I better get out of here. Mayor Rady. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up one more time for New York State Senator Pete Harkin, please. And to my counsel, don't get any ideas. You're not divorcing me. We still got another year in this. So good evening, everyone, and welcome, and thank you all for joining me this evening in the beautiful city of Peekskill, New York. I'm also thankful to God for this evening, for the blessings we have received, and the success of our efforts in this past year. Before I go any further, I do want to acknowledge some great friends of the city of Peekskill who are with us this evening. So please stand as you are able as I call your name. First, Senator Pete Harkin. Once again, thank you. I also want to thank our school board and, doc and our superintendent, Dr. Mauricio, Alan Jenkins, and Mike Simpkins, and Ms. Johnson. I also want to thank our Deputy, Deputy County Executive, the Honorable Ken Jenkins. Also to my city manager, Corp Council, and all city staff that are here that make this all possible today. Clap for them too. Yeah. <laughs> And I also want to thank some of the housing board electors who are here this evening from the Peace Care Housing Authority. Please stand if you are here. <laughs> to all of the boards and all of the commissions and the committees that helped make this happen, thank you as well. And last but not least, I'd like to announce and acknowledge my council. First, Councilwoman Patricia Riley. Councilman Ramon Fernandez. <laughs> Councilman Colin Smith. <laughs> Councilwoman Vivian McKenzie. <laughs> and Deputy Mayor Kathy Talbot. <laughs> and some of the most influential people in our city, I'd like to acknowledge our city court judge, the Honorable Reggie Johnson. 
Melissa Lower. Our police chief, Hami. <laughs> and our fire chief, Rose. He's back there as well. So I want to acknowledge the ongoing support of Governor Andrew Cuomo, Senator Peter Harcum, Assemblywoman Sandra Galef, County Legislator Catherine Borgia and County Legislator John Testa, and County Executive George Latimer. They each set an undeniable example of public service. It is the day, it is the day after day commitment and dedication of our city staff, elected officials, business owners, developers, neighborhood volunteers, and numerous city residents that permits me to say with great pride and assurance that the state of our city today is stronger than it was when I first took office in January 2018. In my 2018 State of the City address, I said Peace Scale was like that legendary pot of gold at the end of every rainbow. During the past year, we worked hard to share some of that gold to attract people, to attract families, businesses from across the country and around the world to join us in making Peekscale a great place to live, a great place to work, to start a business, to raise a healthy and happy family, and to enjoy the best life has to offer in the Hudson Valley. Today, I'm proud to share some of what we accomplished. We always talk about economic, uh, economic development. First of all, many of you may or may not have noticed, but Peekscale is kind of hot right now. Small businesses from all kinds, from bakeries and restaurants, art galleries and salons, they're popping up all over the city of Peekskill. We're also attracting new technology and green energy businesses and we're looking to attract even more. We worked in cooperation with a number of developers who aren't here just for the buck. They believe in the promise and the diversity of Peekskill and are willing to put their dollars where their commitment is to help the city move forward. We've also heard their frustration with some of the convoluted processes that they've had to deal with in the past. Councilwoman McKenzie worked with the investors and the staff and the planning and economic development to develop a standing order procedure that streamlines the planning process and improves the approval process, both for the building department and the Department of Planning and Development. So now, there's a much easier way to navigate. The standing order is The standing order is now posted on our website so those businesses interested in coming to Peekskill know the process and what to expect. With the red tape cleared away, we have a number of important projects coming online and now moving ahead. We have also added to our pot of gold, the wonderful jewel, the new central firehouse. The truth is, no administration, no one mayor, no one council, or any one group can take sole responsibility for this architecturally significant addition to our downtown. It was a dream of many years and a process of many people and its fulfillment rightfully belongs to the entire city of Peekskill. <laughs> right next door to that beautiful firehouse, you'll see another current building project, the Alma Realty's One Park Place. This development with 181 market rate apartments, 300 underground parking spaces, a public terrace, and more than 10,000 feet of new retail and office space is going to attract residents, support our commercial sector, and help us grow a healthy and thriving downtown. But there's, but I will say that there is so much more. The Abbey at Fort Hill, don't worry about it, go ahead and go, it's good. The Abbey at Fort Hill is another multi-million dollar project underway on historic Fort Hill. The site on which American soldiers had long-term encampments during the Revolutionary War. This project provides 178 luxury rental units and three mid-rise buildings. Two of those are now completed and are occupied and the third will be completed very shortly. As the project is adjacent to our historic Fort Hill Park, Ginsburg Development Corporation donated 52 acres of land to add to the park and the city has obtained funding and is now starting improvements on the park and its trailways. In addition to the Abbey, GDC Ginsburg is in the process of developing the Fort Hill Inn and Spa, renovating the historic convent and chapel into a 40 room inn, premier destination spa and high end restaurant 
and catering facility. It is expected to be completed and open early next year. After the last two decades of waiting to develop an empty lot just two blocks down from City Hall, Ginsburg shovels finally hit the ground last year on the Gateway Project. Ginsburg completed 16 condominium units with off-street parking, purchased another lot to provide off-street parking for neighboring homes, and provided $70,000 to revamp Leeport Park on Main Street right across the street from Bowman Towers. So thank you, Ginsburg. Now I want to talk about the lofts on Main Street. The lofts on Main Street were also completed this year in Peak Skills downtown in the downtown arts district. This is a $28 million mixed income development featuring 75 apartments and 7,200 square feet of new ground floor commercial space providing more high quality housing, options for residents, supporting increased economic activity on our Main Street gateway, and helping to increase our ever-growing artist district in the downtown. If you check it out yourself, you'll get, you can stop by and see the treats from Ty's Bread Basket Bakery. You can stroll through the Evolution Gallery. You can shop at the new Greens Natural Food Store. And you'll know that you're in the peak skill, but you're in a new peak skill where we've made housing, the arts, commerce, and a vital downtown our, our top priorities. I want to thank Jessica Youngblood and all of those in our planning department because their hard work that made this project the recipient of the Municipal Planning Federation's Planning Achievement Award. The lofts are also part of Governor Cuomo's $20 billion five-year housing plan to build or preserve more than 100,000 affordable homes. I want to also thank developer Ken Carney and also now his son who's going to be taking over, Sean Carney, as they continue to give back and prove their commitment to our community. Ken has given our children a place to exhibit their art in the lobby of the building. And I like to brag because my son's artwork is there too. <laughs> he sponsored Peak Scale High School students to attend summer football camps. And most importantly to me, he's take time out of his busy schedule to sit down and offer free advice to our youth in the city of Peak Scale. So thank you to the Carney family. Moving on, talking about our seniors. Peace Guild values our seniors, the people who've been the foundation generation for all we have today. 1847 Crown Pound Road, we have a $12.5 million project under construction right now, providing 53 affordable, down, affordable apartments for senior citizens who are ages 62 and older. And of course, offering jitney service to the Peak Scale train station and again, our downtown. Working as a team under the leadership of County Executive George Latimer, Westchester County, the City of Peekskill, and a developer have cooperated to make this project happen, with the county investing over $2 million in much needed infrastructure. Our senior nutrition department is improving by the second. Beginning this May, we offered seniors a free cooking class, a series of five modular sessions designed to increase seniors' confidence in the kitchen and helping them lean, learn to prepare easy and, of course, healthy meals. Classes take place on Tuesday mornings at the New York Presbyterian Ch Hospital. Under the leadership of Jonathan Zamora, Peace Guild now has TIPS, Telehealth Intervention Program for our seniors. This is a free and voluntary weekly program providing seniors a view of their current health status by measuring four me major indications, their weight, their blood pressure, their pulse, and their oxygen output. The readings are recorded and they can share them with whoever they like. We continue to offer numerous programs for our seniors. Outings, including trips to Empire Casino, which they love, Keno, Broadway Theater, Yankees, and Mets baseball games. We're beginning to translate our materials into Spanish to help our growing of non-English speaking seniors as well. But I want to talk about some of the new things happening as well, our new developments in Peekskill. What's coming up in Peekskill's future? Business, housing, more business, and all of it green. Right now, we're in discussions with the businessman who wants to develop a four-story mixed-use building, as you can see here with first floor retail space, professional offices for lawyers, accountants, architects, and engineers, and residential units on the upper floors on the main street in our downtown. This will finally bring life to what has been an empty lot for, for many years, and the developer has already agreed to building using solid green renewable energy standards. I 
I'd also like to talk about 645 Main Street. This is one of our newest projects, fronting both Main Street and the historic Central Avenue. The project received its final approvals about a month ago, and we should expect shovels in the ground late this summer, early this fall. The project will include 82 mixed income apartments with prices, raising, pr prices ranging from $850 a month, including two levels of parking, a community room, a fitness center, central laundry, green roof and courtyard, as well as an on-site management office for those of us who want to complain or say we need something done. Developer Wilder Balter has committed to add two new amenities for the general public as well as for the residents on this property. A pocket park overlooking our historic McGregor Brook and a walkway leading from Central Avenue to Main Street. The walkway will include historical signage to inform people about the rich industrial history of this area in Peekskill. But I will say that that's not all. While DeBalter has also agreed to host a job training program and to increase the amount of local labor that he will use. The The project will include a car sharing service, an electric car charging station, a green roof over the parking level that will double as a landscaped courtyard, solar panels to offset electric use. I want to thank Mr. Balter for choosing Peekskill for this project. That's like the highlight of my night right there. Thank you, Mr. Balter. But we can't forget about Bree Pettis, the mastermind behind MakerBot Technologies and the 3D printers. Bree is relocating his company, Bantam Tools, all the way from Berkeley, California to right here in Peekskill, New York, 2019. <laughs> Bree is currently restoring some of our old industrial buildings down on Water Street and has also installed rooftop solar panels and his firm will offer great employment opportunities in the milling, engineering, and technology field. I want to thank this common council and the boards for acting swiftly and granting the necessary approvals for this and the other projects that have come before them in this administration. These projects represent millions of dollars in private investment, and they'll stabilize our finances and provide needed relief to our taxpayers for years to come, because we prioritize peak scale. Under this administration, green means green. We are convinced that the effects of climate change are real and present and they're very dangerous and we must face it square on right now for the sake of our residents, our businesses and years to come. We have committed to full energy efficiency and green technology programs and city projects in all city buildings as well as encouraging the same in all private development in the city. In the past, in the past year, Peace Guild has taken clear and measurable steps to become a clean, smart community. And our very active Conservation Advisory Council has worked hand in hand with the city, pushing us forward, and I mean literally pushing us <laughs> forward, with the Peak Scale 2030 Road to Resilience Initiative, aiming to reduce the city's carbon footprint substantially by the year 2030. Please clap for our Conservation <laughs> Advisory Council. I can say for myself, I now understand more than ever that we need to create a well-planned, cost-effective infrastructure and green spaces which can and will support long-term community needs. So thank you to that board and all the boards that do what they do. Yeah. We've begun to help solarize peak scale over the past few years, working with nonprofit organizations and assisting homeowners with grants that offset the cost of installing solar panels. We've received grant funding to, to install two electric car st charging stations this year, and we've installed new LED lightings. We're benchmarking the city's uh, ener energy usage, and we're working to upgrade city buildings to ensure greater energy efficiency. We mean green now and for our future. So let's talk for our taxpayers. City budgeting. This administration and council are committed to fiscal responsibility, keeping taxes low, while improving city services. I'm proud to say that our city is in a much better fiscal, fiscal position today than we were when we took office in 2018. In 2018, our fund balance increased more than $900,000. 
512,000 in our unser un unreserved and undesignated fund balance and $390,000 in our restricted fund balance for our central firehouse, which I spoke about earlier. We have witnessed a steady expansion of the assessment role that has broadened our tax base and helped both the city and the school district pass the 2019 budgets that were below the 2% tax cap. We have, improved, we have improved needed services, adding another career firefighter and additional laborer to our DPW. We've, organ we've reorganized DPW to bring back a, co a contingent of workers dedicated to our parks to help keep our city clean. We're repaving the sports courts, uh, sports courts in the city parks. We've staffed the empty positions in our city clerk's office, which has allowed the clerk's office the resources to work with the finance department to streamline the deposit process to provide notary services five days a week during business hours, to incorporate a digital recording system for the transcription of the common council minutes, and to enter into discussions now with the vendor for parking permits, ticketing, enforcement program, which will allow parking permits to be purchased online in the near. <laughs> Importantly, we've been able to increase community policing and diversity in our police force. Peak scale is stronger, and safer and better today than it was when, when we took office. But you don't have to take it from me. In February two 2019, Moody's Investors Financial Services upgraded our credit rating as a city from A1 to AA3, the best bond rating the city has received since 2013. <laughs> and that rating is based on solid management, conservative budgeting, budgetary surpluses, improved finances, structurally balanced operations, consistent economic growth. Our tax assessor's office has greatly reduced the amount of money the city spends on tax certiorari. In 2013, the city spent over a million dollars on tax search and set tax search settlements. Last year in 2018, we paid 125,000. So they're not here this evening, but I want to give a special round of applause for Ann Scaglione and the Finance Department and Michelle, uh, Michelle Jordan and the, our assessor for their great work. <laughs> and please uh, join me in another round of applause for this council as a special round as a city staff for the city staff who work so hard day in and day out to make this city grow. So please give it up for our council. <laughs> now, why else would you come to Peekskill? Tourism, our historic preservation. The Lincoln Depot Visitor Center and Plaza have received completion after years of planning. This project, along with the museum, is a recognition of Peekskill's rich history and of the historic February 19th, 18, February 19th 1861. Stopped by President-elect Abraham, President Abraham Lincoln as he traveled by train from his home in Springfield, Illinois to Washington, D.C. for his inauguration as President of the United States. We especially thank the state of New York for, funding the, for, for the funding they have provided for the project, which includes offices and exhibit space for the Lincoln Depot Museum. Even, a room event, even an event room that has already hosted presentations during the arts and industry and media week and conference that brought hundreds of people to Peekskill, New York this year, thanks to Ben Green, the AIM Board, and the Hudson Valley Chamber of Commerce. Our nearly three mile long waterfront trail is moving forward. When completed, it will be the longest uninterrupted waterfront trail in Westchester County. Grants from the state of New York again have assisted in constructing a little over 2.5 million miles, I mean 2.5 miles of waterfront trail. It's like, whoa, it's a long walk, right? It's a long walk. <laughs> 2.5 miles of waterfront trail through Riverfront Green Park and Travis Cove. There's an 800 foot long boardwalk and that an overlook at Travis Cove, gazebos, some extensions, some extensive landscape line with cherry trees that were donated by the Peekskill Rotary Club, outdoor sculpture, interpretive signage, and a Trinity Cruise boat tour kiosk. The city of Peekskill has also received awards from Westchester Municipal Planning Federation, New York Council of Mayors, and Westchester Magazine for this water park and trail system. This brings me to our Charles Point waterfront trail where construction started literally last month. We expect completion to be this year. This project will extend the waterfront trail from, from Charles Point Park to the Buchanan border at Lentz Cove. 
It passes the Factoria with Spence Hudson and Finnebrew, the Charles Point Marina, and Fleischmann Pier. It will also include interpretive signage in an area to launch canoes, kayaks, paddle boards for water sports, and activities for all of us to enjoy. We hired a new police chief in 2019, and I welcome Chief Homie. I want to say the chief keeps the police presence in our schools daily. He's worked with our local youth borough, and he's made sure that a member of the police department is part of the youth borough board. He works collaboratively with the youth borough to develop innovative actions to support our youth. He's improved our community policing. He's open and very responsive. And he regularly attends the Peekskill Housing Authority meetings. He's worked to diversify our police department so that it better reflects our community and he continues to improve his reputation throughout our city. Chief Homie has also worked with our Deputy Mayor Kathy Talbot, who spearheaded the city's second gun buyback initiative. And they courted. <laughs> and they coordinated with local business people, including Louis Lanza and John Sharp, to name a few, to raise some $15,000 to buy back guns and get them off the streets of Peekskill. All of this hard work paid off for Peekskill. In the last year, violent crimes in the city have gone down 41%. <laughs> Property crime has gone down 39%. <laughs> so we thank Chief Homie and the entire Peekskill Police Department for their hard work in prioritizing Peekskill. It's a really good photo, too. You guys look really good in that picture. <laughs> in addition to this great city of Peekskill, under the one and only, he's been a mentor to a lot of the people in this community. Under the Honorable Judge Reginald Johnson, the Peekskill City Court received $479,000 in federal grant money from the Department of Justice, the Office of Justice Programs, and the Borough of Justice Assistance to implement a City of Peekskill Drug Court. <laughs> Research has shown that offenders who do not receive treatment or who drop out of treatment tend to continue their drug dependency and reoffend. The Peekskill Drug Court will offer drug and or alcohol, alcohol addicted defendants facing misdemeanor charges a treatment based alternative tailored to their level of addiction. I want to thank Judge Johnson for going above and beyond to address the problems of drug abuse and drug-related offenses proactively and for your hard and consistent work in our peak skill courts. Thank you. <laughs> now, I just want to say, when somebody says that, you got to stand up, brother. Come on, man. Stay like <laughs> Judge Johnson, y'all. <laughs> now talk about our downtown. Nobody in this city knows more about this downtown, works harder for this downtown, loves and appreciate this downtown than our business, in our business improvement district. <laughs> Last year, the business improvement district launched their Discover Peakscale initiative including a new and more accessible website, website which is discoverpeakskill.com. Write that down. As well as their Facebook page for social media presence. Their first harvest festival was an absolute success. And both winter and summer farmers markets brings hundreds of people a week into our Peakskill downtown. They designed new banners, purchased and installed in partnership with the city to create an attractive destination for visitors and residents alike. To address the litter problem, the bid advocated for our new Monday holiday trash collection. And they advocated to increase the number of garbage bins in the downtown. And they worked with the city to change the Saturday trash collection to a later time to accommodate the restaurants so we don't look like New York City in some areas. They've also worked with the Conservation Advisory Council to receive a grant to conduct a tree inventory. They've worked with the city and public authorities to receive, to ex access grant monies to help revitalize our downtown. 
They've assisted the Peak Skill Arts Alliance with the PAA's Open Studios Weekend, which will be held this year, June 1st and June 2nd, from noon to 5 p.m. This is also in our downtown. Downtown is the heart of our city, and the better and more active our downtown, the more of a destination Peak Skill will be. I encourage everyone here, please, please check out the Discover, Discover Peace Skill website and like their Facebook page. But that's not all that's being attracted to our downtown. There's a very, very young man who's doing a phenomenal job as a New York State Senator. His name is Pete Harkham, ladies and gentlemen. And Pete Harkham has also made downtown Peekskill his new headquarters. <laughs> he gave the introduction this evening and the welcome, and he talked about divorces, but he's in love with us, so he's here to stay. I want to say he's not just a great senator and a community leader, he's now a great neighbor and a great friend. We're really thankful for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do as he serves as state senator for New York and the city of Peekskill. The city of Peekskill has hired co-communications to help promote this positive, these positive directions the city is going in. They've since reestablished our social media presence as well, and they're working on making Peekskill a destination city in the Hudson Valley. I want to talk about infrastructure. This year, we've made great strides in improving our infrastructure, identifying weaknesses in our water and sewer mains, identifying illegal hookups that were, pouring, that, that were pouring sewer water into our storm water system, and preparing the design and for the installation of a new water tower, which will help to provide better water pressure to certain areas of this wonderful city. We're also working on infrastructure, infrastructure improvements on Oakwood Drive. The City of Peekskill Department of Planning and Development introduced a plan to reconstruct the road and sidewalk on Oakwood Drive to provide for pedestrian safety improvements, replacing more than 600 linear feet of sidewalk and more than 1,100 linear feet of roadway from Oakwood Drive's intersection with North Division Street to the entrance of Hampton Oaks. It's It's funded in part with the $899,000 federal grant administered by the Department of Transportation and Construction is set to begin this year. This is a project that's been way overdue. In fact, I can say I was a guest speaker at Westchester College in, um, in uh, Town Supervisor Paul Finer's class uh, about maybe seven, eight months ago. And one of the questions one of the young uh, college students asked me was, when are you gonna fix Oakwood Drive? And I said, I wish I could say tomorrow, man, now that you asked that, but I can't. But this is a project that uh, is very important to us. And I also want to say I got in a car accident two years ago in the winter on Oakwood Drive. So I'm especially happy that this is being fixed. I also want to recognize the great work of our water department, David Rambo, director of water, our DPW department, and our planning department for this great um, initiative. Let's talk about our youth within all of us too. As you know, I am most proud and most passionate about serving and motivating our youth. Last year, we sought new leadership in our youth borough and clarified our mission, and I'm more than proud of the results gained in such a short period of time. The Youth Borough Executive Director, Tuesday Pays McDonald, our Youth Borough Board staff and volunteers have done a phenomenal job. They've made significant improvements to our youth borough building to ensure the effectiveness of our programs and our children's safety. They've installed new flooring, security cameras, a security buzzer system, new ceiling tiles and lights, a new sound system, a new router. I want to make sure y'all hear this part. 40 new Chromebook laptops have been ordered and delivered to the youth borough. For children to succeed, we must provide them with a safe and supportive environment in which to gather and be mentored, and we must give them the tools that they need to succeed. So we thank you to the Youth Borough Board. In terms of programming, I'm not done with the Youth Borough yet. The Youth Borough provides a wide variety of programs for ages 10 years old and up. 
Programs include the Leadership Initiatives for Teen, also known as LIT, for ages 10 to 14, the Wednesday Teen Cafe for the high school students, and Summer Youth Employment Program. During the Peekskill Community Congress, one of the major issues was summer youth program, summer youth employment. The youth borough has that. Yeah. <laughs> the My Brother's Keeper program, connecting young people to mentoring, supporting networks, and the skills they need to find a good job or go to college. Rising Tide um, build boat, boat building, educational and apprenticeship program, which enhances reading and math skills through construction of water-worthy wooden boats. And recognizing the death and devastation of the opioid crisis in this country, we engage in both the Drug-Free Communities Program and Project Success Programs that work to prevent and reduce adolescent substance use and abuse. This is our youth borough, ladies and gentlemen. I love my youth bro. Hold on, y'all. I'm almost done with the youth bro. Okay. The youth bros also hosted or sponsored more than 20 events last year, including National Night Out, events for Women's History Month and Black History Month, the annual Men Who Cook, Juneteenth Parade and Festival, which this year is celebrating 400 years of African Americans in America. And this year's Juneteenth Parade will take place on June 15th with Wilfredo Morrell, Ted Bitter, and State Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins as the honored Grand Marshals. So thank you for prioritizing peak skill. And I, I can't talk about our city's hopes and dreams without talking about our school system. Last year, the Peekskill School Board appointed Dr. David Mauricio as the new school superintendent. With the support of caring parents, board members, volunteers, and a strong partnership with the city council and our state and federal representatives, I'm proud to say Dr. Mauricio and our school has begun to move mountains. Peekskill received a $2.4 million increase in school aid this year among some of the highest percentages in the state. <laughs> Dr. Mauricio went out of his way to meet with local realtors to inform them of the great changes that are happening in our schools and to, counter and to counteract the negative reputation that many still have on our schools. Under the leadership of Dr. Mauricio, the school district ran a successful Saturday Academy with over 2,000 visitors attending. The city school district and community organizations like New Era Creative Space, Peekskill NAACP, they're moving forward and we've made Peekskill a My Brother's Keeper city as well. The My Brother's Keeper initiative was created by former President Barack Obama in 2014 to address persistent opportunity gaps facing boys and young men of color and to ensure all youth can reach their full potential. So thank you. In addition, the city's youth borough has collaborated with our school district, collaboration is huge in Peekskill, by the way, to create Haas's Way. <laughs> Haas's Way is a program providing children who have been suspended from school a place to go and get guidance and attention they need. So when you're suspended from school, you don't just go home and watch YouTube, you actually go to the youth, bo youth borough and get some mentorship and some guidance during the day. So thank you. <laughs> So I just want to make sure everybody knows our school district is doing pretty good. Yes, they are. <laughs> Another exciting project is one spearheaded by Councilman Fernandez in which the Common Council is trying to work with Assemblywoman Sandra Galef and the Peekskill City School District to bring a turf field to Peekskill where sports such as kickball, baseball, football, soccer, and lacrosse can all be enjoyed year-round. Now, Ramon didn't have any special pictures, so I didn't put his picture up there, y'all, but he's a handsome young man. Thank you, Ramon. <laughs> Similarly, Tosh Schumer Draper has collaborated with the Peekskill Housing Authority, the Peekskill City School District, the Kylie Youth Center staff, 
and the city of Peekskill and local businesses and community, community members to bring back the Adult Basketball League to the city of Peekskill. The Summer League will begin this June and some of the greatest players of Peekskill return home to play in this league, including the Honorable Alan Jenkins, who's here this evening. And I want to say, there used to be hundreds of people that came from New York City, Harlem, Queens, Kentucky, to watch these basketball games. Yeah, I said Kentucky. So thank you, Tashuma, for prioritizing peak skill. So of course, So of course, the Kylie Youth Center is near and dear to my heart, as many who know me, or even if you don't know me, you may already know that. I've seen so many children's lives change due to the great support, due to the great support of Mr. Corny, B.J. Tinsley, and Julius Carrington. So sorry, it wasn't part of the script, sorry. They put endless hours in the Kylie Center because they believe in our children. Oh God, what the heck? When the building was failing, they didn't. When doors wouldn't open and glass was shattered, lights weren't working and computers were outdated, they gave it their all. And now that we've grown up, it's time that we give back to show them that we understand the importance of our children's future and how badly so many need a safe and supportive place to go. The city has engaged in new leadership and has expanded programs to include lacrosse, dance, arts 10566, Monday night soccer, basketball, homework help, weight training, computer study, yoga, just to name a few. With the support of the community, we raised $18,000 to restore the gym floor dedicated to P.J. Tinsley and the main floor dedicated to Julius Carrington. Governor Cuomo has also visited the Kylie Center. And along with county, state, and local officials, local business owners, and developers, we're working with the Peace Scale Housing Authority to make significant improvements to this Gateway Youth Center, a vibrant community recreation center that can have a stabilizing effect on the lives of our young people. These centers instill a sense of community, discipline, healthy exercise habits, teamwork, and help to increase the self, your self-esteem. They, they provide the perfect setting for local mentorship programs and leadership and development and, ins and ensure a healthy outlet for the, the creativity and energy of our youth. After school programs provide a refuge for at-risk youth, help reduce crime rates, court costs, and other costs of the community. Understanding the importance of community youth centers and with the support of committed developers like Wilder Balter, members of this community met just last week and representative, representatives of the Boys and Girls Club just today this evening are working towards bringing a Boys and Girls Club to take root right here in Peace Guard at the Kylie Youth Center. <laughs> we have the opportunity to give our children and our community a chance to bloom and grow. And like I said before, with the youth borough, with our school district, with our Kylie Youth Center and all of the youth programs, this is a great opportunity for collaboration. So with the youth borough, with the school district, and with the soon-to-be Boys and Girls Club, we're going to make City the Peace Corps one of the greatest for the youth. As a businessman, as a developer, and at the same time, owner of a few buildings in the city of Peace Corps, I see the progress. I didn't start yesterday. I started many years ago when I bought the first building, 992 Main Street, which today is a, a fabulous restaurant. The name is Iron Wine. And I tell you, not just the progress, but the, it's a pleasure to work with the city government from the mayor all the way down. I started around maybe six years ago 
when I bought this building, uh, where we are right now, every day coming up with the enthusiasm of the people. We have different other people invested in the city of Peacefield, invested for the future of Peacefield. So and you walk around the city downtown, you see the market, the, you see at the same time all that uh, di North Division Street, all the beautiful restaurants that are there. So I personally believe that we are, with the next five to 10 years, a big surprise. Building department, the planning is fabulous. The city council, I mean, if I can go through everything, I will leave half an hour uh, explaining to the people and, and to you and to everyone else how wonderful it is to be in Peace Kill. So what I'm saying is a Peace Kill is a place to be. Believe it or not, my in-laws' uh, family in Peak goes back to Peekskill probably over 100 years. Uh, I've spent time down in Peekskill, family events uh, over the years. Um, I tried to do a project uh, probably 35 years ago when I was uh, uh, young and dumb. And uh, uh, when this opportunity came up on Main Street, my son Sean said, uh, you know, we should purchase that lot. And I said, what will work there? And uh, we started devising the concept of the, uh, the, artist, uh, the artist loft with, uh, with the middle income units. We refer to it as a, a beautiful mosaic. Uh, we, we have a mix of incomes, a mix of backgrounds. It's, it's all come together. As, as we went forward, there have been a couple of uh, you know, changes or, or questions as we went along. Everybody opens their door. When I walk in the city of Peekskill, Nobody runs and hides. Everybody says, what do you need, Ken? Sit down. They don't have 10 minutes today. They say, come back in a half an hour, uh, and, and I'll have 10 minutes. And it's, it's been like that, and we've just been open and honest, and they've been open and, and honest uh, with us. We are the regulatory um, compliance management uh, consulting engineering company. And what we do is we mainly focus on air, waste, water, pollution prevention technology. We are compassionate about the air we breathe, uh, water we drink, and uh, the place we live. So therefore, uh, I thought that uh, uh, this kind of business uh, is not only is important for corporations and industries, uh, for them to be able to comply and 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 then to protect uh, the above mentioned, uh, you know, air quality issues and uh, environmental issues. We have maxed out now. We are now almost 15 people uh, in this uh, office. So uh, we, and we also have plans to expand in other states where we can have peak skill as a headquarters because this is the infrastructure that we had built. So we think that, you know, we could expand here and uh, perhaps, uh, you know, build out a little bit more. I think that, that uh, they are very approachable and uh, any times we have issues, you know, we can go and call them and then especially this mayor is uh, very, you know, uh, high uh, in the technology, you know, uh, tech savvy and then he responds to email right away. And then for example, we have been having issues with the bus stop in front of our office and, uh, you know, we have talked about that and uh, he is very amenable to take it further. And I, I was told that he had spoken to the city council people about that as well as the county and uh, you know he, he tells me that he had taken steps so in this kind of encouragement I think that's the type of thing that we would like uh, from any city to encourage the small business like us I started my business in Peekskill more than 25 years ago and I wanted to come back to Peekskill because of all the great things that are happening here our developments on two acres in the heart of the downtown uh, on Main Street and Central Avenue. We're going to be building a seven story building with 82 apartments, a mix of workforce and affordable housing with parking below. When we started, we met with the mayor and the council and talked about what we wanted to do, got their feedback, and together we developed a plan for workforce and affordable housing that I'm thrilled with and I think the city's thrilled with. Our development needed a lot of assistance from the city. We needed some zoning changes and we needed site plan approval. We're also in the waterfront district. The city was a pleasure to work with. They're professional. They have staff that's been through this before and they have great leadership from the mayor and the council. I'm excited to work on a development that doesn't just create affordable and workforce housing, but I think it's gonna be a model development. We're gonna have job training as a part of our development and we're gonna have a building that's very green with 
renewable energy as an integral part of it. So that being said, I want to say thank you to all of the developers, all of the business owners, and the people who choose to make Peaks Hill a place to do business, a place to raise your family, a place to work, and a place called home. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing the next step in the city of Peaks Hill, New York. Incredible diversity of powerful strength. And I want to make it known in no uncertain terms that as long as I'm mayor, this community, this community is and will be a safe place for everyone. No matter what their race, no matter what their color, their creed, their gender, secu sexual orientation, or documentation status. This administration represents the kind of leadership our country desperately needs. Showing empathy rather than hostility, compassion rather than hate, courage rather than cowardice. We're deeply committed to creating and sustaining that kind of community in Peekskill and to ensuring that it's safe, sustainable, and a welcoming, friendly hometown for all. I want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to serve as your mayor of such a great city. God bless you all for coming here this evening and for sharing with me the conviction that Peekskill is one of the greatest cities on earth. And I thank you all for being, <laughs> being supportive. God bless one of the greatest cities on earth. Peekskill, New York. One thing I want to, one last thing I forgot to say, and I will get killed if I don't say this. I want to acknowledge the greatest person on this earth, my dear son, Zylon Rainey. Where are you at, Z? Hold on one second, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, real fast, before we leave, before we leave, just a, just a closing. That was good, thank you. Closing benediction by the one and only Reverend Jan Nunley, please, ladies and gentlemen. I have to pull that down quite a way. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, keep this beloved city under your care. Bless our leaders, especially Mayor Rainey, the members of the Common Council, the boards, the commissions, and all city officials and employees. Grant them wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Give them courage and foresight always to consider and provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations to the wider community in which we live, the county, the state, the nation, and the world. Give them understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice with mercy always served. Teach us to accept our responsibilities to our fellow citizens, that we may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society. Let your holy and life-giving spirit so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this city, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, hatreds cease, and divisions be healed. 
Help us in the midst of our struggles to confront one another without rancor or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Guide the people of this city so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable housing, adequate nourishment, fulfilling employment, and just payment for their labor. Enable us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression. That people from different nations and cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. Be with the generations to come and those who watch over them, teach them, and nurture them, that all of our children may grow in grace and wisdom before you. Grant that we may be at peace among ourselves and a blessing to all others who join us in this most beautiful city. This we ask then in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, the one God who watches over all that is with eyes of love. Amen.